Hello, beautiful ladies. So I'm doing this thing where I am. I go live on IG at the same time. Okay. So we're live on both. Hello. Okay. So as you are hopping on, or if you're catching the replay, give me a hashtag replay. Let me know that you were here. So what we're going to talk about today is signs that anxious attachment is holding you back in finding the right person for you and that lasting relationship. So we're going to talk about signs of that in just a minute. So this is for you if you have been frustrated with why you are not finding the love that you want, the relationship that you want, the person that you want, you know, why another man has pulled away, why another first date didn't go anywhere, why after several months of dating someone it didn't work out, you were left or not chosen, and you want to find that relationship that is stable, secure, loving, passionate, authentic, you know, the one that meets and exceeds your expectations for partnership. So this is for you if you're a woman who is at this point where she would really love to have a partner in her life. You are that woman. It's your number one priority. You want that masculine presence, that man who makes you feel safe and secure in the relationship, a man who takes care of you, who wants to build a future with you and doesn't freak out and pull away when you mention the future and you don't want to settle. You would like to just be okay being single, just happy enjoying your life in the process and only pursue relationships because that person is truly right for you and not just because you just want to be chosen or you just want to find someone. And you want to make sure that you do it right this time because things haven't gone so well in the past. You've had your heart broken. You've given your all, but he ended up not choosing you and you know breaking your heart. And you don't want to go through that pain again. You want to figure out why is this happening and what can I do differently? And you want to be able to move you know, more quickly to identify which men are worth focusing your time and energy on so you're not wasting so much time on these wrong men, men who are unavailable, who don't want to commit. And you want to be able to more quickly just identify, yes, no, is he someone who is worth investing more in and exploring more with? And you want to finally find that partner. Ultimately, that's what you're looking for. So you can focus on other areas of your life, growing your career, making future plans, planning a wedding and a family, going after your purpose and your mission in life with this piece finally not the thing that you feel like you have to keep focusing on. Um, so you don't have to feel like you have to keep dating anymore. So if that's you, this video is for you. And if you're on Instagram, I'm looking at a different camera at the same time, so I may not be looking at you, because I'm also in my Facebook group. Okay, so let's dive into signs anxious attachment is holding you back. So number one, it's anxious attachment that is holding you back if your sense of self-confidence and your sense of self-worth is dependent on other people's opinions of you, what they think of you, if it's positive, if they like you, if the guy chooses you. And so because of this, number two, you are constantly on an emotional roller coaster in dating and relationships, needing that other person to validate that you're enough, that they want you. You're dependent on that rush of excitement when they validate you, but then you feel really horrible and awful when they don't. So you're always feeling on edge and hypersensitive to their actions or inactions and the words they say or don't say don't say and are over analyzing everything you know and you're probably knowing like this is crazy this is not healthy but you're not able to stop yourself so even though everywhere else in your life you're doing so well even though you're smart you're high achieving you're successful you're like a badass it totally doesn't seem to fit with who you are everywhere else but for some reason it shows up this way in your dating and relationships we're going to talk about why. Uh, number three, you have a fear of being too much. You're afraid that your emotions are too much. Your needs are too much. 
just who you are is too much. So this leads you to morphing yourself into what you think the other person wants. You have a lack of boundaries, trouble saying no. You are often people pleasing, not communicating your true feelings and needs while doing everything to meet theirs and then feeling resentful for not getting what you need back. Because behind this is the belief that if you are exactly what they want, if you don't rock the boat, they will definitely have to love you. They won't leave you. And this pattern can show up outside of your romantic relationships as well. With friends, at work, in your family, you self-abandon to be liked and not abandoned. Number four, you have a pattern of falling for people quickly early on. You quickly start dreaming about your future with someone you just met. You want to spend all your time talking to them, with them. You know, you're sure they're the one. And with this, you're mostly focused on, do they like me? Are they going to choose me? What do I have to do to get them to choose me? They're the one without having tested true compatibility or seen uh, an equal returned love. Okay, so in a sense, you're just looking for them, wanting them to choose you so that you can kind of get that validation that you are good enough because they chose you. So in a sense, you really just love love. You love the feeling of being chosen and the sense of the high that comes with it. You love that feeling of being obsessed with someone and how amazing that person is and how they're the one for you and dreaming about a future, but you're dependent on them continuing to choose you in order to feel good. They are really just a way that you avoid feeling what is really going on underneath this need to be chosen or validated. Number five, you experience anxious thoughts, anxiety, possibly panic attacks, especially once you get attached to someone. Your nervous system is on edge once you like someone. You're not able to relax. You're worrying about where you stand with them uh, constantly. You're wanting more from them. You're reading into everything. You're finding it really hard to stand those gaps of time between communication, between seeing them. And then you start to worry, did I say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing and worried that they're leaving. So number six, at the root of all these behaviors and patterns is that you have a deep seated fear of abandonment because you fear that you're really not good enough, that you're too much or there is something unlovable or wrong with you, leading you to not want to rock the boat and just do everything you can to make that other person happy and choose you. So you need a lot of reassurance and connection in order to not have this fear take over. And you tend to interpret the other person's behaviors as signs that they're disinterested or losing interest or that you did something wrong and they're going to leave. So you're constantly on edge and in fear. And this is where our anxiety is coming from. So number seven, because of this fear of abandonment, you will open up too quickly to the people you date, uh, t creating basically premature uh, emotional um, vulnerability and a premature trying to connect with them on, on some very deep level, really in the attempt to try to create this instant relationship because you can't stand that in between where you're not sure what it is or where it's going. Um, and so you're trying to avoid that by prematurely trying to create a bond with someone you don't really know. Number eight, you have a tendency to get overly clingy and dependent in relationships, losing yourself in the relationship and the other person. And this is anxious attachment codependency. Number nine, you have a tendency to want to control the other person because you're trying to mold them into the person you want them to be. And actually what this goes back to is that fear of rejection or abandonment. You're doing this to try to gain a sense of safety and emotional security. So it's difficult for you to let go of control and trust that people will be there for you to know that things are going to be okay even if they don't go your way because when things don't, it feels like a threat to your safety. And since you look for that outside of yourself due to these unhealthy healed attachment wounds, you are trying to control the person in the situation so you don't feel that way. You don't want to feel abandoned or you don't want to be abandoned. So we're controlling the other person. So what causes these anxious attachment tendencies? So this often comes from an unpredictable emotional connection with one's parents or primary caregivers in childhood. 
could have been very young, uh, in which as a child, you did not get consistent love and connection to the level that you needed. It doesn't mean that they were terrible parents and they may have loved you and as an adult you can rationalize this and then be like, but my parents loved me. Um, you know, clearly they, they did all of these things for me and you can rationalize and then be confused and be like, no, but there was nothing, you know, my parents loved me, I had a great childhood. And that doesn't actually have to do with it, right? As an adult, we can look back and be like, I was loved and we can see that, but it has to do with how it felt as a child. And it wasn't necessarily, in fact, it wasn't logical. Um, and so it was just that whatever love and connection you got just wasn't enough or to the extent or in the way that you actually needed as a child. So it probably means that your parents were sometimes unavailable to you and sometimes available, sometimes loving and present and sometimes they weren't and you didn't know when. So your needs for connection and love were not met consistently, they were met inconsistently, creating this inner anxiety about if they were going to be there for you or not. And this gets taken into your adult relationships. You may have been given validation for things that you did and when you behaved in certain ways and then when you didn't, that was taken away. Um, and so there's that feeling of like I'm walking on eggshells. When they weren't there for you in the way that you needed, it felt like you were at fault for why this didn't happen. Um, and so there are a lot of things you could have made it mean about yourself, like I'm too much. I'm not good enough. My needs and emotions are too much. There's something wrong with me. I'm wrong. I did something wrong. I'm bad. And so deep down, you want to feel safe, accepted, and loved, but you don't know healthy ways to do this. You're operating basically on a child's operating system from way back when that happened in childhood, and that's how you are showing up in your adult relationships, because in childhood, that was how you learned to navigate these things. And so there are parts of you that are stuck in the past, um, and they carry all of these emotions and feelings uh, and pain, um, and they haven't been healed. And that's why they are the ones running the show rather than you're put together on top of her stuff, adult self, who runs the show in other areas of your life. And this is why you can be like, I don't get it. Like everywhere else, things are great. This is relational trauma. So it comes out most in our relationships. So that you may find that there are ways that this anxious attachment actually shows up in many areas of your life, even in your work. So you're ultimately seeking to get that consistent, available love and connection that you didn't get in childhood and that validation that you needed um, from a partner, but you're looking for it in the wrong places when with the wrong strategies and ultimately putting too much and too many expectations on another imperfect human being who will never be able to fulfill everything that you didn't get. And this is where your own inner healing has to happen. Because while sometimes your partner may be able to meet a need, they may not be able to be there all the time because they've got their own stuff going on. And at the time when, when they meet that need or validate you, it will help allay your fears of abandonment or not being good enough, but only temporarily. So you'll be constantly seeking that validation uh, and that reassurance again and again and again, which would ultimately be really hard for another person to constantly be giving you. Um, and as a result, you are likely acting out behaviors um, that you developed as a child um, to try to get those needs met that actually push that person away or don't allow you to grow the relationship. And so it's actually, there's this like bottomless hole there that can't be filled by another person. It has to be filled by your own healing, your own inner work. Um, so you can come to a relationship from a place of wholeness and high self-worth and emotionally meeting your own needs first. So what do you need to do to heal anxious attachment? Let's talk about that. Um, so number one is having awareness. So awareness of what your patterns are. So this video outlines a lot of what's going on that you might see yourself in, in some of these or all of these things that I talked about. You know, anxious attachment is on a spectrum from extreme to lesser so. But most women who come to work with me uh, who have anxious attachment already have this awareness um, that these are the things that are going on for them and they probably read um, some books or listen to some podcasts or follow some people and nothing is actually changed and that's because awareness of the problem is only the first step. 
So number two is understanding, understanding where it comes from for you, what is going on at a really subconscious level that is driving these feelings and behaviors. What are the thoughts and beliefs that are really driving this? And number three is then actually healing past wounds. And this is where the real change begins to happen. So you need to heal the attachment wounds and the pain that you carry um, that caused these anxious attachment patterns in you. These experiences are where your core beliefs come from, your core emotions that you tend to feel in relationships come from. It could be, I'm not good enough, I'm abandoned, I'll never be chosen, there's something wrong with me. And most of these things aren't things that we're consciously aware of. So it really does require outside support to do this. Most of this will be in your blind spots as well as buried in your unconscious memory. And so it requires someone to help guide you through uncovering these things, healing them, and then rewiring your nervous system and then the beliefs and thoughts. And it's quite an involved process. There's a lot of just pieces to, to heal. So number four is learning how to emotionally regulate yourself. So learn to be with, process, and manage emotions in a healthy, productive way rather than acting out in unhealthy ways or simply ignoring and stuffing these emotions because they will always come out one way or another unless they're healthily dealt with. And the number five is creating new patterns of thinking and behavior. So learning what securely attached thinking and behavior looks like through changing your emotional and thinking patterns, practicing it and having it become your new way of being. And number six is self-expression, learning how to express your feelings, your needs and vulnerabilities in a healthy way that can be heard by the person you are dating, not acting or reacting based on your fears and triggers. So if you want to change your anxious attachment patterns, then I invite you to come join me in my mastermind or my one-on-one -on -one coaching where you get the support to do every single one of these steps. So both have live coaching portions. So uh, there's three times a month that you are meeting for live coaching. Both include practice assignments uh, and implementation things to do outside of the calls. You get access to an incredible library of resources, teaching on everything outside the calls, including how to date healthily, choose, attract, and then keep and not sabotage that incredible relationship with the right person, how to maintain that. You get a small community of other women who are going through this with you if you join the mastermind. And if you join one-on-one, -on -one, you're getting one-on-one -on -one calls every single week that are deep dives into completely rewiring your nervous system, uh, completely rewiring your thinking patterns and your behavior patterns and shifting and healing your relationship with yourself and then with others. If you are joining the mastermind, you get at least one one-on-one -on -one call for a deep dive into whichever of these steps you're most stuck at um, for that really intensive work. And don't worry about needing to know what that is. It's my job to know where you are and exactly what you need next, the thing that's gonna make the biggest difference for you. So imagine that this isn't just for the next five months or six months of your life what you get from coaching will stay with you for the rest of your life and continue to give you back dividends. It's an investment in yourself, your future, and who you want to be in the future relationship that you will find that you will have the tools and the ability to have last a lifetime, your future husband, the father of your children, and also the quality of that relationship because of the work that you do on yourself today. So if you'd like to chat with me about either option, then send me a DM or you can find the link in my bio to set up a consultation call. And I am going to sign off. So if you're on Instagram, I've been looking at my Facebook the whole time. But if you have any questions, you can pop them in the chat right now. Hi, Marina. Uh, anxious attachment for us or anxious attachment for the guy. Um, so we're talking about just what it looks like overall. I'm not sure exactly when you hopped on. Um, so it could be for you. Like if you have anxious attachment, it will show up that way. If he has anxious attachment, it will show up that way for him. And all the steps that I just talked about would be for, for anyone. But obviously this is like for your healing because we can't decide what someone else is going to do. Did I answer your question? Okay, 
Well, I'll come back to you in the comments if you respond. All right, I'm signing off. Bye, ladies.